We have looked at data log as a rule language using logical syntax mostly, and it might have seemed uh, rather theoretical compared to the more technical and standard oriented discussions that we had for RDF and Sparkle. So the question I would like to answer now in this short video is how can we actually use data log in practice? Um, my name is Markus Kutsch, welcome back to the lecture on knowledge graphs here at TU Dresden. Now, before I start um, telling you a bit about how you can actually use data log in a real settings, in particular in real settings where you have large graph data available, um, let me also draw a brief comparison to um, Sparkle as the main uh, RDF query language that we have uh, looked into so far. So <clears throat> from what you have seen so far, you might get the impression that Sparkle had many more features than data log. So for Sparkle, we have spent several sessions to just discuss all the different language features that the language offers. And for data log, there were hardly any features, right? We have a comma and we have a um, implication arrow, which we write as a colon minus. Um, but uh, that's basically it. Maybe we have stratified negation if we use this, but uh, it seems far less than what we had for Sparkle. But it turns out that many things <coughs> that you can do in Sparkle are actually also possible with this very limited feature set of data log already. Now, here is a little list of supported features, assuming data log with stratified negation. Um, and uh, there we can see we already actually capture and even extend quite a number of things that Sparkle can do. Of course, I'm speaking here not on a very technical, concrete level, because we are not talking about RDF syntax or about IRIs or blank notes or things like that. We are more talking about the principled power that the language is giving you in practice. <clears throat> Now, um, what you certainly have are basic graph patterns. These are simply conjunctions of triple atoms. Now, I've talked uh, about this before, that you can represent triples in um, a, a database that you would be able to use with data log. And you can have um, a triple predicate, for example, and have atoms for this. And then if you want to make a pattern, you just write several of these atoms using the same variables in certain places. So that's very simple. <clears throat> path expressions. Sparkle had a very elaborate language for path expressions. Um, data log does not have any such thing syntactically, but it turns out that you can capture them in data log. It is possible to use rules to get the same functionality. And I will show you an example in a second. Union. Surprisingly, maybe you can also express union, um, even though you don't have an operator for it. <clears throat> the idea simply is that you use several rules. If something, some result, say, follows from A and the same result also follows from B, it's correct to say that the result follows from A or B. Yeah? And this is how you would get union. And there's a little exercise for this as well, where you can um, <coughs> uh, think about this a bit further. Minus and not exists. So these are the features of Sparkle that have something to do with negation. They can also be expressed, not surprisingly, maybe using negation in data log. So this is how you would um, capture these. Again, you have to do some translating um, in order to write this in rules, but it is possible. <clears throat> and um, even some um, more recent Sparkle features like values, which allowed you to declare a certain um, intermediate result, so to speak, in uh, Sparkle in order to use it in your query <clears throat> can also be supported in data log. You simply have to specify the facts that you would like to have in the values, and then you can directly use them in your data log query. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, I think most of these are clear or easy to see. Path expressions may require some more explanation. I will not make it very formal, but I will show an example at least to, to um, explain that. With all of these, of course, we should recall that data log always assumes set semantics, meaning that we cannot have duplicates. This is the same as if you would be using distinct everywhere in Sparkle. If you don't want to do that, data log is not what you're looking for because um, there is no meaningful and um, practically um, feasible, I should maybe say, semantics that does duplicate counting and allows arbitrary recursion through rules. 
already because with recursion there can be infinitely many different reasons for why something is derived and so if you would do counting there it's, it would not lead to a very good behavior in practice so eliminating duplicates is something that you almost certainly want to have if you are using a recursive rule language like data law okay now for the example i promised here is a little um, property path pattern from sparkle you remember the syntax here which we introduced with the uh, reverse direction of the properties we are connecting here two things uh, the example URI of uh, Bach uh, Johann Sebastian Bach um, and a variable x and the connection is made by this um, property path here which is the disjunction of two reverse properties with a plus meaning one or more after it how would we get that in Sparkle? Well, we simply write four rules, which includes two recursive rules at the end. Um, the first two rules are for the case where we have exactly one occurrence of this um, pattern here, where we say the result or a result for X, a, a valid result binding is one for which we have a triple that connects X through has father to Bach. And another result would be where we have a triple that connects X through has mother with Bach. <clears throat> This is these two options and the reverse here, we just realized by flipping the uh, arguments, the subject and the object. Um, and recursively, if we have more than um, one occurrence of this on a longer path, we can get this by saying, if we already have a result Y and we find that an X has a father Y, then X is also a result or if um, X also has some mother y again it's a result so this is recursively extending result with further ancestors <clears throat> and uh, so we see in from this query that we find all the the people who have um, bach as an ancestor directly or indirectly okay right so um <clears throat> this is what you can already do with data log um there are also a lot of features of course that you do not have um, most prominently maybe of uh, well, the first thing we would think of are filters you know in sparkle we had a large number of filter conditions for all kinds of data types in fact we had data types these are not part of the pure logical definition of data log so i simply did not say anything about that but um this can of course be added usually in logic we call this a built-in predicate or sometimes a concrete domain um, <coughs> predicate in certain logics or um, uh, well there's also different names in other logical approaches but this general idea is that instead of just having constants like Bach or some abstract uh, names that you use you could also have numbers or you could also have strings in data log and you could have predicates that allow you to uh, check certain aspects of these numbers or to return certain uh, numbers that only match certain things. <clears throat> uh, some care is needed if you have infinite data types like the numbers could be for example but in, in general it is possible to achieve quite a lot in this direction but it becomes quite technical and as you have seen with Sparkle you can easily talk for several videos about these features um, and it wouldn't really add very much to the basic uh, ideas that are in data log so it's not really the main thing that we are uh, that we are interested in when we study data log um, <clears throat> but it's also true that many practical tools that support data log do not support such a full and rich set of filters and data types as Sparkle does so there is also practical limitations here behind this um, <clears throat> in Sparkle we had bind which allowed you to bind uh, a certain variable to a computed function you could say binds this variable to the value of that other variable plus one for example if this is not supported in data log it can be added again with some care and there are implementations which have such features <clears throat> Optional was another thing in Sparkle, um, this which does not exist in data log and in general in logic and in relational um, algebra, there is no good uh, way to represent that, I'm afraid. So <clears throat> handling partial result mappings is something that uh, you cannot do directly, at least in a very intuitive or convenient way with data log. Um, okay, we also didn't have any aggregates, counting and so on was not there in data log. Again, this can be added. One has to be um, 
careful because like negation aggregates introduce non-monotonic behavior um, because if you count the number of facts, you count the number of adults, you count the number of children in uh, you derived in your database, and then you compute something more and uh, based on this count maybe, and then the numbers change, then suddenly what you did earlier is no longer valid or it's no longer justified and, and you can get into trouble. So um, it's possible to do this if you have again some kind of layering like with the stratification and it's also possible to do this in some other cases um, but uh, in general many solutions for this has been have been found so this is not a completely open problem but it's not there in the in the basic formalism <clears throat> and well also interestingly sub data log cannot have sub queries uh, so you can in a certain sense data log um, can have sub data log queries um, in the sense that if you can find some structure, if you can find some particular type of data with data log and you would like to use this result in another data log query, you simply have to add the rules that give you the result to um, a new query and uh, and continue using this. So subqueries in this sense are possible, but what you do not do not have in data log is to have limit or offset or order by on the result of the subqueries. So just getting the 10 largest cities and then finding all the universities in these cities as we did in Sparkle is something you cannot do with data log. And I'm actually not aware of extensions that would support this uh, in a natural way. Maybe there are some ways, but it's not uh, commonly studied, even though it's actually quite useful in practice. <clears throat> okay. Now, towards practice, I should say, um, of course, we are interested in systems. If we want to use something in practice, we need to have implementations. It's not enough to have a good idea. You also have to have it running in computer science. And um, in data log, thankfully, there is a lot of um, uh, ways to get it running. There are many, many different implementations of data log. <clears throat> you may assume that much, given that I told you that this is a decades old formalism studied since the 80s. But it's not quite so simple. There are not so many very old systems that support data log in a good way. Um, data log has seen a, a revival in the last decade and many of the systems we are using today are not very old yet. They have been created from scratch in the last 10 years and are now uh, maturing. Um, <clears throat> still, there's quite some choice here. There's uh, dedicated data analysis, knowledge graph, even I would say centric systems, which are um, built around um, data log, um, often working in memory with large in-memory computing facilities uh, available today. There's some names are listed here of uh, systems that you can find on the web if you look for them. Um, not all of them are public or, or free. Uh, rule work I will mention in more detail in a second is the free system that we will mostly use here for this course because we can just download it and try it. Um, Carl is also free for example. <clears throat> There's also answer set programming. I was mentioning this briefly when I was talking about non-stratified negation. It's a whole um, area of AI with very interesting applications and there are very good systems there. They can also do data log if you want that. Um, there's also good old Prolog. This is maybe the only case of uh, the kind of all the kind of tools that really is quite old in many places. Prolog has been big already in the 80s and 90s, and um, the implementations have been developed over over all this time. And the uh, Prolog, as a logic programming language, as it was conceived originally, um, also as a subset has data log included. But um, since Prolog often is evaluated in a different way, it may not be your tool of choice if you have a large knowledge graph and want uh, guaranteed termination um, and correct results. Yeah. And there's also many other rule engines. I mean, essentially, data log rules are just if then rules specified in a in a logical style language. And there's a whole world of business rule engines, as they are called, that use different kinds of if-then conditions to specify certain things, and which have also some traction in, in the industry and uh, provide implementations that one can use. As you can see from this list, there are many different use cases and um, the approaches taken in each of these uh, is, are quite different and have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, as I said, for large knowledge graphs, I think the first class of tool is most um, uh, tailored to a 
but answer the programming can also do something there. <clears throat> For the others, I think they have different use cases. Um, however, speaking of knowledge graphs, of course, we have to ask, how about the knowledge graph formalisms? Does this, do these things support RDF, for example? Can we use an RDF graph and run data log on top of it? Of course, we know that in principle, this is possible. We could store RDF in a database and have a triple predicate or something like that. But then there are many specifics like the IRIs, the blank nodes, the different data types um, that would be rather cumbersome if we have to handle them and pre-process them to, to get them run into such a system. And uh, it turns out quite a few of the systems, especially of the first type, support RDF natively, have already built in support for IRIs, also for uh, the rules that you're writing and uh, can directly use all of this uh, natively without you having to do any kind of translation. <clears throat> In the case of rule work, actually, there's also support for Sparkle, as I will show you in a minute, uh, thanks to the VLOG um, da data log reasoner, which is used as a backend there. Right, um, so let me say a few brief remarks about rule work. Most of this you will learn from our uh, tutorial classes if you participate in the tutorials or maybe if you study this on your own and you are not at TU Dresden now or there's no course running then you can also just look at the exercise sheets that I always link in the descriptions of these videos or that you find on our website and look at what uh, the instructions are there and what kind of uh, hands-on um, exercises you can do to get a bit more uh, um, I'm accustomed to this. I think this is much better than me giving you a long theoretical description. This is a practical tool and you have to try it out to see how it works and to, to learn how to use it. Um, <clears throat> so here's just some high level information. Rule work is our framework for working with rules. And this is not just data logs. There's also extensions there. It's a free and open source tool that we are developing. Um, here at Dresden, you can find it uh, on GitHub and it has some uh, um, applications to knowledge graphs, but also has applica obvious applications to, to teaching uh, when I use it in this slide uh, set here. Um, <clears throat> at its heart, rule work is a Java implementation. It's a Java library for working with rules. There's an object model for rules. You can manipulate them, reason with them, get the results of queries and so on. But there's also a command line client, and this is what we will mostly be using for the um, tutorials. So you don't have to program Java to, to do this, but you can actually just um, <clears throat> launch this command line client and then control the whole thing with a few commands, try out different rule sets and load different data sources and see the results. <clears throat> Behind all of this is uh, a rule engine for doing the heavy lifting. It is called VLOG. Um, it's a uh, column store inspired uh, implementation, very memory efficient implementation of data log, which is also a good match here, especially for teaching since it's um, optimized to run on laptops. Uh, I mean, essentially it's the architecture is really useful for um, using hardware efficiently, uh, also limited hardware. So you can do a lot on small systems. This one's written in C++. <clears throat> um, as I was saying, um, uh, rule work supports RDF uh, connections, so you can load RDF um, from uh, rule work <clears throat> and uh, directly load it from different formats as uh, uh, Ntriples, Turtle, uh, RDF XML support. And uh, you can even load data from Sparkle queries that you issue to some remote service, as I will show you in a second. <clears throat> and all, over all of these data sources, you can then run rules and get recursive computations and results uh, back. There's also support for stratified negation, meaning that you can use negation and if it's stratified, it will be okay. If not, you will get an error and a warning that there's a problem. <clears throat> and there's another feature which I don't explain in this course. It is called value invention, um, also known as existential rules or tuple generating dependencies. Um, basically uh, allowing you to create new values uh, or new constants as you go along. Sometimes this is very handy, can give you some computational powers that you don't have in plain data log. Okay, now <clears throat> technically if you want to write uh, programs for data log, for rule work, uh, then you can use a syntax which is relatively similar to the syntax I've used so far in these um, videos, but uh, with some slight differences. 
Uh, in particular, variables are marked by a question mark, just as you know it from Sparkle. Um, we do this because uh, we want to support all kinds of constant names, no matter whether it's uppercase or lowercase or whatever. You can use any string as a constant. And so in order to mark variables, you need some special symbol. <clears throat> um, negation is written with a tilde symbol and rules are terminated with a full stop, which is something that is quite common in the logic programming world uh, these days. I think all of the rest is pretty obvious and self-explaining. Here you see a little query, which is similar um, to the uh, queries that I showed you before, where we were looking for the descendants of Bach. A parent is a father or a mother. Uh, ancestors are parents or are parents of ancestors. And uh, the result we are looking for are people who are an ancestor of Alice and whose profession is not a composer. So this is a negation and this would be profession is something that should somehow be given in your database. Otherwise, and just as father and mother, otherwise this query wouldn't make much sense. <clears throat> okay, right. So this is how you can write uh, the queries. There's more features to support RDF and to support IRIs. Um, but uh, this should also not be too surprising. So if you want to have RDF-like functionality with um, rule work, then you can also write uh, things which are which look a lot more like Turtle. Yeah? So Turtle, you already know, it's a simple RDF syntax and much of the syntax here is quite similar. So you have a prefix declaration. If you want to abbreviate a certain IRI, you can make a prefix. For example, I do here create the WDQS prefix to be this uh, address of the Wikidata Sparkle endpoint. <clears throat> also, I can directly use the results that I get from such a Sparkle endpoint for a certain Sparkle query um, in the code. Currently, this looks like this. Um, I have, I'm have i here declaring a source for a predicate called mother, which has two parameters. And uh, the data for this mother predicate should come from a Sparkle query against the URL that I get by taking this prefix WDQS um, and append Sparkle on it. This is the actual uh, Sparkle endpoint of Wikidata. <clears throat> I want uh, and I want to answer uh, to find the results for this query pattern here, child WDTP25, this mother relationship of uh, Wikidata um, to the variable mother. And I'm interested in the bindings for child and mother, which should be used as a two parameters here. So this is how this is written. It's a bit um, uh, pedestrian. Yes, I admit it's not a full Sparkle query, but you somehow break it down, but it should be easy to use. <clears throat> okay. And then, okay, there's co support for co comments with uh, the percent sign, just as in Turtle. And then you can write uh, rules. And the rules are pretty much like the ones you just saw on your um, on the previous slide. I'm looking for maternal ancestors here which are of course mothers and maternal ancestors of maternal ancestors. And um, now I would uh, find the maternal ancestors of Ada Loveless, uh, the uh, first programmer, uh, as it's usually said. Uh, so, and uh, Ada has this IRI in Wikidata and I can really write it just like in Turtle with these um, angular brackets here. And I am interested in the relationship between this and some X. And this is my result. With meta. So what you can see here really is a recursive query running on top of data that I get directly from Wikidata and um, processed and in Sparkle. Of course, this particular query, you could also just uh, use a Sparkle query for no need for data log here. but. <clears throat> you can see that you could use this in creative ways also to combine data. Yeah, this is also very interesting if you do data analytics, that you have different data sets, different graphs maybe, that you uh, get from different sources. Maybe you do a Sparkle query. There's also other sources one can use. You can have a file of RDF or of CSV format to uh, as a source <clears throat> and uh, several other things. And so you could combine these uh, these sources together, get information from them, do joins across this, and recursively evaluate them to get certain results. And this um, is quite quite capable and quite powerful. Okay, right. So this is a short glance I want to give you. There's 
uh, more, much more to say about rule work and relog and how this all is used. Um, attend the tutorials for details. Um, I might also have some nice uh, introductory video at some point to explain the system a bit more. Um, but um, from a high level viewpoint, it should be enough for today. So in summary, data log can be used in practice. There are tools, they are even freely available at your fingertips. You can just try them out and hopefully uh, enjoy working with them. And as usual, we are happy about feedback um, that you may have when doing so. So thank you very much for your attention. And with this, we are uh, ending data log uh, and the next big topic will be a property graph and cipher as another way of viewing knowledge graphs. Uh, so see you soon and bye-bye uh, for now.